this week on our Facebook page, I asked how many of you would like to know who's been tracking you online? And of everybody that answered this small survey question, all of you said yes. <laughs> This is Technology Questions Answered, and for those who don't know me, I am your host, Steve Smith, aka Z Axis, and yes, you may call me that. And today, I'll be answering the question of who's been watching you online navigate the internet all this time, and with a free piece of software which I give my five on five, but I'll explain that later. So, how about this free application? What is this called? It's called Ghostery. This program allows you to detect, learn, and control everything you need to know about the trackers used on websites around the internet. Even though we're not quite sure it's actually around yet. So how about we continue on to learn how to download said software. Head over to ghostery.com where you can download and learn more about this application which is absolutely free and will continue to be free, spyware free, spamware free, and basically free of all the junk we don't want anyway. You can get all that information straight on their web page. But how about, what is it as a primary service to all of us users? Why do we need this kind of software? Well, let's say you've got to look at both sides of the coin. Ghostery as a responsible tracker is not just turning everything off. It allows you to detect the trackers in a web page. Not just turn them off, but detect them. There is a reason for this. All website developers and companies require the usage of tracking software to detect how many people show up to the web page, how many unique visits there are, which content is more popular than others, what files are being downloaded. Basically, there are things you can do with the information from the tracking software that you don't know can be done yet because you're sitting on the other side of the computer. So, first, it detects. It will tell you everything that's on the web page, and I will demonstrate that to you. Then, it teaches you what it does with that. Now, there are many numerous other tasks that will happen, but let's say you take the website of web developer. What would he do with the information he's collecting? In my case, I look at the operating system, I look at the screen resolution, I look at the color depth, the browser and the browser version, which is very important when you're programming and trying to make it backwards compatible please upgrade and update your browsers it is very important to avoid hijacks of all kinds now that information does allow us to go and make our scripts better make our websites work throughout more and more places but keeping in mind that if everybody updated their browsers we would need to do that less and less and require less and less of the tracking software to do so so the first thing is figure out what the type of computer which is most common is that you can design the web page to that there is a proof our web page actually looks good within a laptop screen maybe not a netbook but a laptop screen which is more commonly used or a desktop screen it renders perfectly virtually a hundred percent of the time exactly the way it was meant to do so and this is all based on the statistics and I do deploy all the browsers on my own computer with versions from different operating systems so we get to test them all the time so that's the first point of a tracker what about the second points of most trackers things that you don't necessarily know like why are they looking for your geolocation why are they looking for your IP address why are they looking for things like where your mouse has been on the screen, how many times you visit and all that. That's more like commerce driven information. They get to put their ads where they want on the page and all that. And they actually get to design the page in a specific way where you can click on the ads by accident. Now, 
I can say from personal experience, I try to avoid personal accidental stuff. If you're interested in the information that is announced on our web pages beside our show notes or our front cover, click on it if you want. But I don't put it in the middle of the screen to piss people off because they end up clicking away and then they disappear for the rest of history. So how about the next thing? Learn about the trackers. All trackers are not made equal. In the demonstration I'll show you, there is an option for more information where they give you the address, where you can actually send your privacy concerns. They give you links to the privacy policies and information policies, depending on which websites. And they even tell you what they're looking for. If you take Google, it's usually to make more relevant ads to their searches and content throughout the internet which I applaud because that means I don't have some sort of weird advertisement that has nothing to do with the content on the page. How about the third scheme of that program? Control. You can like various other trackers and hit the other ones. Like you can like Google Site Analytics software and hit Armature or hit Yahoo Analytics. So how would you control them? Well, you can just block them all outright, which is an option in the program, which I will show. Or you can block individual trackers on the internet. Like if you don't mind any other tracker except Armature, you can block Armature. But if you don't like every other tracker except Analytics, you turn all of them off and just turn on the site Analytics. And you allow them to stay blocked besides the one that you don't want. Basically meaning, you can block each and sing every single one of them individually after you learn what each company is looking for. Now, there are other ways of doing this besides the software. The fastest way is to use NoScript or turn off JavaScript. This again depends on your browser. You can also turn off third party access to the websites, which will destroy the internet, literally, because if you turn off third party access to the web page, you gotta watch out for all those web pages like ours that employ Twitter and Facebook. They're considered third party the second they're on our server. So, be careful what you're blocking because, yes, you will block every single advertisement on the internet if you block third party websites from accessing a primary party website. But, you will block all the content too. Also, if you're trying to stay anonymous online, please keep in mind you cannot change your IP address. You can't block your IP address, but you can use a virtual private network. And I've already said this before in a previous episode. Using a VPN will anonymize you, but you still require an IP address to be able to connect to the internet. So don't try to block it, don't try to change it. You have to have the right one to access the websites and the internet at the fastest speed you're paying for. Using a VPN will slow you down because you will have to bypass by server and if the server is a free one or one you don't know about they're probably worse than the trackers on the internet anyway because VPNs can see the secure data stream where trackers cannot so how about we go to this demonstration which some of you might be wondering what the hell is he gonna be showing watch this for a very short demonstration, first, the detect option of ghostery, which appears right here in the top right, tells you a list of all the possible trackers on the current web page. Second, learn or educate. Click on the ghostery icon, go up to the tracker in question. You can view the source script. You can block it. You can view the status and even view more information. To view more information, just click the option. You have access to privacy policy, the actual website, and the information that they collect, what they do with the data sharing, data retention, and even the privacy contact. And then let's come back. Control, the last of their steps. Again, click on this. Like I said, you can block this or head over to Options, Blocking, Enable Web Bug Blocking. You have two ways of doing so. You can select all and uncheck the ones you want. 
can select none and check the ones you don't want or you can just select the ones that you don't want tracking on a per per visit basis so if you've never seen it before and you don't trust it you block it through the menu under ghostery so despite all the positives of the software and the fact that I do give it five on five for a good job well done I do have to explain a few things about the internet and the way that the web servers and all that all work so let's start by it is impossible to prevent websites using first-party trackers from collecting visitor statistics this is normal all web servers collect statistics the way this is done is basically for the most general part the most basic statistics ever done is every time somebody downloads a file your IP address the time the name of your connection from your ISP is given out they can also collect things like screen resolution and all that because of the way the page has to be rendered depending on which scripts but for most part they will at the very minimum collect your IP address the time the date and your ISP information which are sent with the packets so that is virtually impossible to block that just happens to be the way that the internet works it's a statistics engine built into virtually every single web server ever created so that you can't block the other thing you can't block is inline URL tracking the thing where you're looking at the address like bit.ly slash whatever gibberish they put or anything like podtrack.com slash file download dot mp3 slash the address of the website those can't be blocked because unless you know what the address is supposed to be on the other end you can't just write it in so for those don't worry about it it's the same pretext the only information being collected is for the most part the IP address the time the date the information given by your ISP and ending any rendering information if it ever had to do with it if you're downloading a file it's not asking for screen resolution information the fastest way to block all trackers that are script based or pixel based or web bug based is to turn off JavaScript and you can do this by turning off JavaScript in any other browser or using a no script plugin the other way is to turn off all third-party access to the web page this will break the internet but this will also prevent all ads from loading. if you like website though most newer browsers will allow you to fully render a website that you trust and all other websites you don't trust block all the in other information I have actually tested ghostry for the last month and I do give it my full stamp of approval I haven't found any spyware haven't found any bugs all the stuff that you would want to be turned off by default has been all the stuff you'd want to be turned on by default has been there all the information is easy to read except for the source code which I believe you don't really need to see anyway so yeah so five on five for that knowing that there are limitations to the programming and not being an idiot about it I am a website designer I know what I'm talking about next week I'll be demonstrating how to block not just people from accessing your wireless network because that's easy that's everybody can show you how to do that but blocking how people from connecting to your wired connection this is more specific like people no, not knowing the password to your wireless network and using an RJ45 cable to connect directly to the router I'll show you how to block those twits from ever connecting to your network in a way that can compromise the security and even allow them to do illegal activities based on your name that's what I'm going to be showing you next week. Thank you for all those new subscribers I got this week. I enjoy learning that more and more people like the content. If you have any comments, stories, suggestions, or questions, or you need any information whatsoever pertaining about this episode, the podcast, any previous or future episode of TQA, or if you want to get some cool gear, you want to learn more about how to multiple other ways of subscribing to the show, fill out our listener survey, or even connect to our Facebook page or Twitter feeds, the address is www.zedaxis.net. Don't forget to download our toolbar. If you want to become a guest producer, all you need to do is donate any amount to our PayPal account. 
Don't forget to subscribe to the show. Show that like button some love. Let's see you all here next week. Stay safe and online. This has been your Technology Questions Answered. Have a great day. Thank you.